like when it's about their pet, they really want the best for their pets. And a lot of the things that we see in pet nutrition is that like one of the big things is humanization. And they really want to focus like whatever they see, whatever food trend they see in human nutrition that kind of gets extrapolated to pets as well. Um, and then there's the complete opposite where some people want to get feed their dog cat the same way as they fed themselves, but then other people are like, well, this is not really what they were fed, like the cat kibble and canned food isn't really what they were fed in the wild. So we really want to go back to um, what they were being fed when before they were domesticated. Um, I think the resemblance in human nutrition is the paleo diet, diet which is, again, you could see it as a extrapolation of a human food trend as well. Um, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't know why people have those ideas um, because I don't think a chihuahua is a wolf, um, but those are definitely things that are out there. So you gave a good overview of, mm -hmm. of some of the ancestral diets of dogs and cats. What do you think we learn by looking at those ancestral diets? Um, I think, well, what is especially important is that looking at the studies that are out there, yes, there's the ancestral diets, what are feral cats eating, what are wolves eating, but then surprisingly, when we look at diets that look at dogs and cats and what diet they select, they seem to still select the same diet as their ancestors are eating. So I think we can still learn a lot from that. However, we still have to think, like when it comes to self-selection, um, if we as a human being would self-select our diets, um, would we necessarily eat a complete and balanced diet? There's a still a difference between preference and something that is really good for us. Um, so I think there's lots to learn from it, um, but I think those things have their limitations. But there also well. seem to be some misconceptions about mm -hmm. what animals in the wild eat. So yeah. you, you mentioned particularly uh, animal fiber. Can you explain yeah. that a bit? So animal fiber uh, is a concept that was raised by um, my colleagues at Ghent University. Um, when an animal is eating uh, prey in the wild, it's eating much more than a chunk of meat. And I think many pet owners, when they are feeding their, their dogs an all meat diet, or think about people that are feeding raw food, they're just giving a chunk of meat, or they're just giving organ meats. There's no bones there, there's no hair, there's no connective tissue. But that also has an impact on digestibility, it has an impact on fermentation, it has an impact on health. And in that study where they looked at cheetahs that were being fed either a chunk of meat, that was just meat, no connective tissue, and then there was a um, whole rabbit carcass with the hair, the bones, the skin, uh, cartilage, uh, collagen, like everything was there and they've noticed that when it comes to GI health and fermentation that that was a much healthier approach compared to the chunk of meat. And the other thing uh, that you brought up was, was, yes, it's good to look back at you know, what the evolution of domestic dogs and cats are, but their lifestyles are actually rather different now. In what ways, uh, I mean, it's obviously some rather obvious ways, but in what ways are, are pets' lifestyles different from the wild? So looking at animals in the wild, they're very active lifestyles. They're hunting for their food, so much higher activity because of that. And then what we also see is that it's always survival of the species. So they are in gestation, lactation, or growth all the time, just because those are the um, physiological statuses that are most important to keep that species going. Um, so uh, other than that, they're outdoors living. So again, it's a very active lifestyle. Or if we look at our animals at home, um, they are very lazy, usually living indoors. Then we spay neuter our dogs and cats, which reduces activity level and energy requirements. Um, there's uh, no survival of the fittest because we really want them to live a happy long life. Well, if we look at animals in the wild, the lifespan is much shorter. So it's really a very different purpose in life. So we really have to wonder if nutrient requirements for those two different lifestyles are really the same. Um, it's a bit the same as a somebody who's just lazy at home on the couch all day and somebody who's um, doing sports in the Olympics. Like those are two complete the different situations. Mm -hmm.